Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and a very good day to everyone. So today lecture, uh, I will be explain, explaining on the topic of the construction material management. So as for the introduction, material management uh, is a vital function for improving productivity in construction projects. And the management of materials should be considered at all the phases of the construction process and throughout the construction and production period. So this is because poor materials management can often affect the overall construction time, quality and budget. So from here it can, it can be said that the, the construction material management is very important because it may affect the time, quality, and the cost of the project. And it is important for planning and controlling of materials to ensure that the right quality and quantity of materials and installed equipment are appropriately specified in a timely manner obtained at a reasonable cost and are available when needed. So, what is a material management? The definition of construction material management can be given uh, as a material management is defined as planning, identification, procuring, storage, receiving, and distribution of materials. So, it is all about anything related to the construction materials. The purpose of material management is to assure that the right materials are in the right place, in the right quantity when needed, and the responsibility of material management department for the flow of materials from the time the materials are ordered, received and stored until they are used in the basis of material management. So what is the aims uh, of the uh, material management so the basic things actually is to achieve the right quality the right quantity of supplies at the right time at the right place and of course for the right cost as for the objectives and functions of the material management it can be classified as efficient materials planning buying or purchasing procuring and receiving, storing and inventory control, supply and distribution of materials, and the quality assurance. The, object, the secondary objectives of material management uh, like, uh, is uh, efficient production scheduling, so to, to take, make or buy decision prepare specification and standardization of materials, to assist in product design and development, forecasting demand and quantity of materials requirement, quality control or material purchase, material handling, use of value analysis and value engineering, and developing skills of workers in material management. While uh, for the classification of construction materials, the materials can be uh, divided into uh, various types, uh, which actually uh, can be categorized as bulk materials, uh, the materials that are delivered in mass and are deposited in container, for example, like sand, gravel, topsoil, cement and concrete. And um, another type is bag materials, uh, the materials which delivered in bags for ease of handling and control use, like uh, cement, for example. And then uh, the other types is pelleted materials, uh, which also comes in a bag that are placed in pallets for delivery, like uh, cement, doors, or maybe uh, bricks and uh, the other types is uh, package materials 
the materials uh, they are packaged together to prevent damage during transportation and deterioration when they are stored. So this is like a pipes, tiles and electrical fittings. Then we go to the uh, process of construction material management. So in the process of construction material management, uh, so it involves uh, a few uh, stages like a material planning. Then uh, we have the purchasing. And of course, uh, after the purchasing is done, then the material will be uh, brought to the site and it has to be stored, store keeping. Uh, after that, uh, the inventory department will do the inventory control and they have to also uh, do the receiving inspection and dispatching. Then um, the other process is involved value analysis standardization and variety reduction and after that it involves materials handling handling and traffic variety and um, the last process will be involved the disposal of scrap and surplus and material preservation in material planning so material planning include measuring ordering and scheduling it is emphasized that planning is a very important process to increase the productivity, profit, and assisting the time to complete the construction projects. The productivity of the construction project will be hanged if the material planning process is not implemented properly. For example, uh, let's say in your planning, so the work has to be started uh, on the 15th of April. But uh, on site, actually, uh, the material has not been received on the day itself. So it actually caused a delay okay, to the planned work. So this is uh, actually will cause a problem to the project. The next one is uh, about purchasing. Okay, purchase the materials and have the services from supplier to get the support of operation as the construction project from production to marketing, sales and logistics. For example, a detailed material list and coordination of the purchasing and order of material are significant to assure the material will available on construction site. Purchasing procedure can be uh, described as uh, follows. In step one is a material indent, so it involves uh, all these steps. Step two, inquiry to vendors. Step three, vendor comparison. Step four, vendor selection and negotiations. Step five is a purchase order. And step six is a vendor evaluation. So this is uh, the uh, purchasing process where actually uh, involved uh, from internal customer to the supplier where you need the, the department uh, first have to determine the specification and selecting the supplier, contracting, ordering, expediting and evaluation and follow up and evol evol evaluation. So there are two stages uh, of uh, phases here which is sourcing and supply. So this actually is the whole process of buying. Then we have the uh, inventory control department where actually the duties of the inventory control department is to decide about the types of ordering system, fixing the safety stock limits, fixing up the reorder level and maximum or minimum stock level. Uh, after that, uh, actually is very efficient uh, if the organization have this receiving inspection and dispatching department. So the responsibility of this department is to receive the materials, 
when delivered by the suppliers. After receiving it, the quantity and quality must be checked. So this, uh, this is like the, the uh, QC, QA and then QC. So production parts and materials are checked against blueprints and specification, whether it, it is uh, same or not. So non-production production items are also reviewed when once it is as per the specification given, so the good will be accepted. Otherwise, it will be uh, rejected and the department might uh, ask the uh, supplier to replace the material with, uh, with the one uh, which actually uh, same to what has been uh, indicate in the specification. Then the value analysis and standardization process offer the greater scope in reducing the materials cost. So it also reduces the number of varieties and also helps in finding the substitute for the materials at lesser cost. And of course, in uh, any organization, in any construction project, uh, the first thing that uh, you have to uh, set in mind is about cost. So uh, I'm sure in any departments, in any organization, they don't want to overpay uh, for the material. So they have to uh, scrutinize this process uh, where they want, they have to ensure that the material cost is within their budget. And then uh, in the logistic process is a concept that stresses movement of the materials and it involves planning, implementing and controlling the movement and storage of all uh, the materials to the finish uh, of the product to meet client requirements. During construction project, routing of the materials will affect the cost and time to complete the construction project. For example, uh, okay, uh, the department have to know where the, I mean, the specific material uh, come from. Okay, in terms of the disposal of scrap and surplus uh, and the material preservation, so this is also important. A stock control can categorize as a technique plan to be the cover and to ensure all materials or equipment are available when needed. Stock control include uh, raw materials, process, process material, assembly components, consumable stores, general stores, maintenance materials and spares, work in progress and finished product. So it is very important as the construction materials were delivery as requested and with the progression by the proper management of stock control. At the same time, construction activities will generate big amount of the waste and it will cause difficulty to the construction industry. However, with the planning of the material management, which is effective, will help to reduce the waste of material and increase the profit of the companies. Okay, from this slide, what you can see is, um, I mean, every day, actually, million tons of building waste produced each year by the construction industry. So what uh, each organization or each company should do, so they have to examine the design details of building to ensure efficient use of materials. And they have to choose a strategy for each stage of construction they have then to evaluate and estimate generated waste on site because they do, I mean, we have to make sure that there is no uh, big amount of waste. And after that, uh, the evaluation of materials ordering and storage procedures on site, investigate waste disposal options and uh, the waste uh, separation, storage and transportation system then uh, the company has to decide uh, whether to go for the local landfill or local waste recy recycling for the waste management. So this is uh, very important and crucial in construction, in any construction project. 
then we go to the uh, i mean we have to look into uh, problems uh, that often uh, occur in material management the first one is organization structure so the coordination and communication between estimating department research and development department purchasing department and plant and machinery department should be maintained at highest level so uh, main, main issues that uh, usually occur in organization structure like undefined scope lack of communication uh, incomplete drawings lack of conformance to requirements non-standard specification incomplete or ineffective meetings difference between plans and specification and uh, don't communicate exactly the other problems uh, that always uh, face, been facing uh, in a material management is a procurement problem which include the availability of material availability of quantity price reduction to match competitors price late deliveries materials are not delivered as per schedule late or incorrect submittals poor communication between parties lack of conformance to requirements unrealistic delivery dates rehandling of materials storage areas are limited or are far from working areas which may cause difficulties uh, to the uh, construction works theft or damaging during handling or other conditions another problems is on the storage space a large number of materials is uh, sometimes required depending on the magnitude of the project and the term storage space implies both enclosed and open space that can be used to keep materials of wood safe until the need for it arise. All materials need protection against many threats such as pilferage, theft, damage or loss. Materials such as aggregate, bricks or blocks may not require enclosed storage protection than proper outdoor positioning and stacking. However, other materials such as reinforcement bars, steel columns, timber and galvanized steel for trusses must be protected against contact with water in order to avoid rust or corrosion. And the size of proposed building may occupy 60% of the total project site enabling the remaining 40% to be used for temporary access and site facilities. In such case, the planners must arrange for periodic delivery of certain material to avoid cluttering the space and maintain constant operation to keep in the activity smooth. The other problem uh, that normally occurred is the security problem. Security of materials on site is of paramount importance. Gradual perforation and theft are issues of concern to the project managers. So this is normal in construction project, like loss of materials and uh, which actually will represent financial loss to the project as a whole. And in the end, it increases the cost of the project. Materials are prone to be stolen despite being installed. And some materials, as earlier mentioned, may not require indoor storage. Therefore, a well-designated vigilant must be maintained 24 hours on site. That is why uh, if you see most of the construction site, they use the security guard in order to ensure the site security from being trespassed by the, uh, I mean, by trespassers. Uh, then uh, in terms of the availability of materials uh, on market, Steady flow of materials throughout project duration is among the primary function of material management. However, this can be affected by market availability of the material of work. Occasionally, manufacturers can run out of raw material or be affected by government policy to the extent that production may have to be slow or suspended unavailability of materials of work on market can affect material management by either increasing competition in material purchase 
or delay the general work progress. So what actually the uh, importance of material management is, is about the lower prices for material and equipment, faster inventory turnover, continuity of supply, because if uh, the supply is uh, disturbed, so the chances of the project delay will occur. And reduce the lead time, reduce transportation costs, less duplication of efforts, elimination of bug passing, reduce materials obsolescences, improve supplier relationships and better records and information, better interdepartment cooperation and personnel development. So what is the advantages of having a good uh, material management? The better accountability part of the material as well as other departments and no one can blame others. As material management by a single authority, which can lead to better coordination because it became the central point of any substance related problems. Material management departments to ensure a better quality materials provide a request in a timely fashion department. This may lead to a better performance of the organization. A material management system is usually controlled through a system. Therefore, it can help decision making related to the material in the organization. An indirect use of material management is the development of good quality material, ethical and moral standards in organization, maximum company profit and improvement of credibility, improved customer service, enhancement of communication and improved quality of staff. Then uh, we go uh, to the uh, some of the technologies uh, that uh, normally use in material management. So these are the tools used in the construction industry change constantly with the continuous changes of technology. Researchers are finding ways to apply those changes in technology to construction in order to improve production and lower the cost of the operation. So some some technologies that might uh, I mean that might be used for the material management is like a barcode applications to material management and RFID, which is radio frequency identification. So what is the barcode and what is the RFID? So we go uh, okay we we go to the next slide to know what is the what is all about. Okay, barcode application in construction are mostly intended to provide accuracy in data collection, to improve productivity and to save time in the data collection process. Typically, typically barcodes are used for material and inventory management. The scope of barcodes extends beyond material management. Barcode provide the advantage of relatively error-free data collection, which improve productivity and avoid errors. In some construction firms that use barcode claim that it saves time, money and labour while improving the accuracy of inventory. Okay, uh, this is the example of uh, how to use the barcode in material management. So for example, okay, this is the cost of the item. So this is under the sales management department then uh, they have to check the stock availability so for example for example here it shows only 10 pieces are left in stock while the department try to purchase 50 pieces so this is under stock and purchase management and then uh, then they have to i mean understand the consumer trend so this is the example of uh, what is the barcode is look like? I'm sure uh, all of you are quite familiar with this barcode because this uh, system is not only uh, used by the construction, I mean construction material management, but also everywhere. Even if you go to the uh, shopping malls, then uh, you can see uh, all items actually. Uh, 
being placed with a barcode. So from the barcode, actually, we can trace uh, the items, the price of the items, and the uh, I mean the date of manufacturing, uh, where actually it has been manufactured, and the, supp the supplier, and so on. While for the radio frequency identification, uh, the RFID is an automated data collection system similar to barcode. RFID application in construction are mostly intended to provide accuracy in data collection to improve productivity and to save time in the data collection process. So the technology uses radio frequency wave to transfer data between a reader and a movable item to identify, categorize and track. So this uh, system is fast and does not require physical sight or contact between reader or scanner and the tag item, performs the operation using low-cost components and attempts to provide unique identification and backend integration that allows for a wide range of application. So this is how actually the RFID works. There are two primary components of an RFID system as shown in this uh, figure. So the whole RFID system requires the text and the reader including an antenna to be operated. So this is the RFID tag. So this is the RF antenna which can be, uh, uh, there is a reader here. So it can be transferred to the network and the workstation. So uh, the department actually uh, may receive the RFID tag from the supplier and they actually can check from their system. So they don't have to go to the site and check uh, each of the uh, physical stops. So this, uh, the uses of RFID actually can be used for the uh, material tracking. So material as a move in the job site since direct contact is not required for the data collection. So this may avoid theft and loss since managers may notice when materials are not where they are supposed to be. Uh, materials receipt, materials can be easily verified as they arrive to the site and the type of material received can be known easily and verify if the right quantities were received. Okay, so this is how actually the RFID works through GPRS, through the satellite, so it can be traced uh, from the production side and then to the shipping and supply and to the construction side. Okay, so as for the conclusion, good planning of material management may help to avoid any delays of works on site and reduce any extra cost for a project. It is important to manage all materials and in inventory throughout construction activity and processes. It discuss the material management on construction projects and potential to employ technologies in materials management practices. And it clearly identified that these are important for effectively managing materials management in the construction project in order to provide better handling of construction materials to provide an overall performance of construction projects in terms of time. So as a conclusion, a good planning of um, cost and quality. So uh, with that, thank you very much.